Irish. We used to playing good in hours ago. We had a limo waiting for her. We had paid for her. There's someone coming. I'll call you back later. Well, you're here at last. I'm Bill Zaney. Welcome to America. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And how's the flight from London, Will? You don't mind if I call you Will, do you? Well, not at all, Mr. Zaney. Oh, it's, it's Bill. Well, the flight was very pleasant. Bill, I particularly enjoyed the peanuts. And soft drink. Yes. And the magazines. Peanuts. We were very thoughtful of them. Mm. Well, uh... well, it's great to have you here as our first playwright in residence. I think you're going to be pleased with the progress we've made at the American Shakespeare Festival Theatre West. And i got to tell you, Will, having you here is going to put a bum on every seat in the theatre. We can't be more thankful. Oh, it's my pleasure, Bill. And I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to getting our first production of Hamlet at the moment. It's my first Shakespeare play. Oh, the first play mine you produced? No, the first one I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen one of my plays before? Great not. Been too busy producing. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't seen one of my plays in your entire life? No. Nope. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, yes I have, I could have forget. I've seen West Side Story. <laughs> a tree, maybe four times. That includes twice on water. West Side Story? I didn't write that. Technically no, but it's the Romeo and Juliet story. Updated, musicalized, Danny Bernstein, Jerry Robbins. It's a classic. Well, your next play should be a musical comedy. What's a musical? It's a play with music. Oh, not a mask. No, a mask is something to wear your face for Halloween. Speaking of Halloween, that opening scene of Hamlet with the ghost coming along the castle walls, that's fantastic! That's going to scare the bejesus out of the audience. Spooky stuff like Freddy Krueger coming at you. Freddy who? Krueger, you know, my name is Well, I'm not familiar, that's not a play, Will, it's a movie. You've never seen it. I don't get to the movies much. It's a classic! Write down the title. <laughs> you know when you're here, I can get you a free month's Netflix. <laughs> you can catch up on some of their good ones. It might even help with your way. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Nightmare on... Elm Street. Got it. Now, where was it? Oh, yeah, Hamlet's father's ghost. You don't mind if I make a few suggestions, Will, do you? They're just suggestions. I'd be happy to hear suggestions. What if we have the ghosts not just scare the crap out of the guys on the castle wall, but we'll actually kill one or two of them, like tear their heads off, just to get the play off to a real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no! I mean, well, I don't think I care about that idea at all. You see, Hamlet's ghost is not some monster from a horror film. He's a troubled spirit who comes back to one of Saddam's murder. Let's move on from that. I'll tell you what I really like though, Will, is that whole revenge thing. And that Hamlet character, he's great! Does he have a last name, by the way? No. <laughs> Just Hamlet. Great! Well, that's a little weird, but that's okay, you're the playwright. What a witty character though, he's charming, he's got charisma to burn, but on the doubt side, he's a little, how would I say it, a little wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? Yeah, he's so damn indecisive. He's gonna kill Claudius, then he's not gonna kill Claudius to be or not to be. I mean, the guy has kind of got a major issue making up his mind. Bill, don't you see? That's his tragic flaw. His tragic what? Flaw. In a tragedy, the main character has to have a tragic flaw. Oh. Hamlet's tragic flaw is his inability to act. It's what eventually contributes to his downfall. Well, that's really interesting, Will. But couldn't you give him a tragic flaw that maybe didn't hold up the action? Like, say, for example, a speech impediment. Or maybe the inability to remember jokes or something like that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'm just trying to be helpful, Will. I know you are, but you don't seem to grasp what tragedy is. I know what tragedy is. I love it. It's blood and toner and bodies all over the place. Here's the thing, though, Will. How much of a character did you kind of have him doing things that make him look less than nice from an audience perspective? What kind of thing? Well, for instance, killing Polonius. Here's this nice old man, a little gassy perhaps, with all the kind of tit chat he does, but he's well meaning and he's harmless. And then along comes Hamlet and stabs him in the arse. He <laughs> doesn't stab him in the arse, he stabs him through the arse. So what? The arse. It's a kind of wall hanging thing. Polonius was hiding behind us. Really? 
you know, well, you should use footnotes in your plays. It gets very confusing for those of us not versed in a little bit in English. I actually thought the stab in the arse was a nice little touch of coffee cream. If he only wounded him, but he killed the poor guy. And that's going to turn the audience right off. He doesn't know it's Polonius who's stabbing. He thinks it's the king. Really? A case of mistaken identity. I did not get that. That's okay, then. Wouldn't it be better if he just wounded him? Well, no. He has to kill him. It's a tragedy. But if he kills him, who's going to give Ophelia away to Hamlet? We she doesn't marry Hamlet. She drowns in the river at four. I know, and that brings up a whole other problem. Ophelia is the only babe in the entire <laughs> play. <laughs> now, I know Hamlet's giving her a hard time, and she's done a little bit crackers, but does she have to drown? Couldn't Hamlet maybe rescue her? Maybe give her some seed more. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can't. It's a tragedy. But when Ophelia's dead, there's no one left for Hamlet to marry at the end of the play except his mother. Well, Hamlet doesn't marry anyone at the end of the play. He can't. He's dead for God's sake. Right, him and everyone else. I mean, you kind of kill off every major character, Will. And, and, but don't you think that's a little over the top, even for a tragedy? I think we're coming to an impasse, Bill. What's that? Never mind. Look, I'm not saying the last scene isn't great. The sword fighting and then the poison cup. Terrific stuff. But we just can't let everyone die. You know, I'm not rewriting the ending, then. I'm not suggesting a complete rewrite. I'm just saying that we kind of have some minor changes here and there. Say, for example, the liquid in the, in the cup isn't poison, but it's the potion that Juliet drank at the end of West Side Story. I didn't back that kind of story! Sorry, I mean, what's his name in Juliet? Romeo! Yeah, that's the guy. Juliet drinks the potion, falls into the step like sleep, and then later wakes up. Couldn't you have the same thing happen in Gertrude? <laughs> Why would Claudius give Hammond a potion to put him to sleep when he wants to kill him? I don't know. You're the writer, you'll think of something, and let's take the poison off Clarity's sword as well. Maybe Claudius gave that job to Yorick and the fool forgot to do it. How could Yorick forget? He's a rotten Oh, well, someone else, uh, Someone like Rosencrantz or Gilder or whatever is it? Dead, too! You see what I mean, Will? You kill everybody off. There's nobody left to root for. You aren't supposed to root for anyone. It's a tragedy. In a tragedy, the audience is supposed to be moved by the downfall of great men. By the way, men bring about their own destruction. I know, I know, I know. But you got to give people a little hope. you got to give them just a little bit of sunshine. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I'm William fucking Shakespeare and I can back whatever I damn well be. Take it easy, Will. Calm down. I'm just trying to help. Sit down! And eat! <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's my advice, okay? Keep the fighting. Have yeah. Hamlet sit with Claudius. Then Gertrude will fight from the potion. Have Larry take some refreshment. Ophelia comes in all wet and leaky. Yeah. Saved by the Harbour Patrol. And Polonius has recovered from the stab in his ass. Expresses his hate desire for Gertrude. And only let him play and come away. Yeah. And what about Morgan Brothers? Who's he? He's the guy that comes in at the end of the play. Probably pulls up the Danish army. They have this fantastic battle. And then the Norwegians go back to Norway with their bell between their legs. And then, just as the curtain falls, Hamlet's friend King of Denmark. What do you think of that? What do I think? What do I think of that? Well, I think you don't know a damn well thing about my plays. And if you've got your grubby little hands on my hands, you turn my tragedy into a travesty. And I'm taking my name off your theatre. That's a bit rash, well don't you think? Do you not want to like mull it over? Oh there's nothing too far. I'm taking that Hamlet and all my other plays and going back to Stratford on Avon. And I suggest you stick with your musical comedies. Good day! I... <laughs> Shakespeare just left my office. She's pulling out of her deal. No, she doesn't want to do Hamlet. She doesn't want to do anything. I don't know why. You know what these archetypes are like. I'm afraid we're back to square one. What do you say to a summer season of The Odd Couple? No sex, please, we're British. And for the Shakespeare fans, West Side Story. Great. I'll get the ball rolling. I know. It's a shame about Shakespeare. It's a real tragedy. <laughs>